What's up everybody, it's your friend Greg J. Hannibal, The Radio. Today I wanna to talk to you about quilting in the African-American tradition. Quilting and doll making in the African-American uh, tradition. And the reason I know that you're thinking, wow, what an obscure thought uh, just uh, from Hannibal, The Radio, but uh, the reason I wanna bring this up today is because my mother, may she rest in peace, was quite an artisan and collector of uh, African-American dolls and quite the artisan where it came down to quilt making in the African-American tradition and uh, she has quite a collection of, of intricate quilts uh, she was quite the artist and uh, we at one point submitted a lot of her work to the William Grant Still Art Center uh, in Los Angeles for their uh, black doll exhibit and this was one of the first times that they had also used quilts and uh, it was uh, welcomed, the exhibit was welcomed with such uh, notoriety and it was just an honor to see some of my mom's works up there with uh, all different African American women from all around the nation who have submitted their dolls, submitted their handiwork, all handmade and some of them are collectible. So here what I want you to do is just enjoy some of the sights and sounds of the Black Doll exhibit at the William Grant Still Art Center out there in Los Angeles, California. How are you? My name is Ami Matavelli. I'm the Education Coordinator here at uh, William Grant Still Arts Center. And I'll show you a few things that we have up right now during the Black Dollies. It is the 27th annual, so it's been going on here for a long, long time, way before I got here. But um, we really are very proud of this show in particular because we feel like we have some amazing pieces. So I'll show you, it's not an academic show. It, we really wanted it to be more of a community setting. Although, you know, the dolls are on exhibit, they're art. We explain to children that they're art. They're not, you know, huggable or touchable dolls. But we still wanted it to be very comfortable. So we don't necessarily have placards along all of them. But we do walk people through. And this set of dolls right here, the Ragnation dolls, they're uh, dolls by uh, the artist Pat Shivers. And what she wanted to do was she created these boudoir dolls that are connecting with every woman's uh, inner little girl. <laughs> and some of them are kind of fashionable, some of them are very um, Afrocentric, some of them are very um, sexy, very sexy. Some of them have high heels and you know, even if you look at some of them they have cute little undergarments and things like that. From there I'll show you Betty Jane's. So Betty Jane Johnson's um, quilts and dolls are amazing. We've just scattered them everywhere. Maybe this one right here, the small quilt, um, that has Dr. King and Coretta on it. And what she did was, there was a technique that was started by another woman, but she picked up this technique and she got a pixelated photograph. And with this pixelated photograph, she used a patch for each pixel, rather than um, just trying to do an overall mm -hmm. picture. And she created this image, this optical illusion that we see with, with mm -hmm. the uh, quilt that you know, when we squint our eyes, we can see the image. all over the place. She, when people walk in, they're just stunned by what she does because, or what she's done in her life. Because it seems like in a short span of her life, she was so prolific. I mean, she raised her children and, and grandchildren and, 
and uh, from there became an amazing artist. And then we have um, a few other dolls. We have one doll from about 200 years ago. It's, it's a quilt doll. And this doll right here has no face. Uh, it has no, no distinctive features, but you can see it's been really loved. And uh, it's, it's probably our oldest doll. Cynthia Davis, who works at Charles Drew. And she started out by being um, an outreach and educator that uh, basically talks to people about HIV prevention and also um, whatever to do when once someone has uh, contacted HIV. So um, we have photographs that she's taken from her trips to South and East Africa. She met a group of grandmothers that were making some dolls. They weren't really unified, but they were making and some dolls. They were so amazing and so uh, museum quality that she thought it would be great to have a collective. So they started a collective, and this collective actually was making these dolls that were being sold to museums, and it was sustaining the group. And a lot of the grandmothers had children who were who were sick with with AIDS, and it was able to buy. They were able to buy meds basically and take care of their families off the money that they raised here. Unfortunately. I think it was about a year ago, um, uh, cholera swept through and all of the grandmothers have passed, all of the grandmothers that were part of this collective. And so some of the ancient arts, some of the old arts of actually creating dolls, creating traditional folk art, I guess as it's called, are just dying away with, with grandmothers and they're not really being passed on. This, this collective really tried to pass it on to the youth, but a lot of youth were not really interested in, in continuing this art form. Oh, she was yellow. And she's being coquettish. You can see she's got her head down and she's uh, looking up at you from behind a little veil of gold chains. The shoes, oh, she was very sexy. These dolls right here are uh, glove dolls that were made by Cheryl Williams. They're made out of gardening gloves. And what I love about these is, when I was growing up, these gardening gloves, which we call brownies, we knew if anybody was walking around in the streets with, with brownies on, they were ready to fight. And so when I saw these symbols that I typically would see as symbols of work, hard work, or symbols of violence, and they were transformed into these beautiful little dolls, this was amazing to me. I love the concept of transformation getting something that's an ordinary object or something that has been seen by many people as something negative and turning it into a positive. And this was really nice. Uh, an ugly tie quilt. Cool. And she made this of her husband's uh, uh, old ties that he didn't want anymore. Wow. Yeah. They are the nice ties though. They are nice ties. Yeah. I got a beautiful ties. But yeah, this is another, another way of transforming and recycling. And you see that over and over again in this show. Beautiful. People make something out of out of the things that are being thrown away or things that are being discarded and they make beauty out of out of that, make art out of it.